right, I think we can go ahead and get started. Again, I want to welcome everyone who has just joined to the hands-on lab, build your first my process with Appian RPA. My name is Sam Merrill. Uh, I'm a senior product strategy developer here at Appian, and I'm joined alongside Rob Monroe. Uh, Rob, I don't know if you want to introduce yourself. Sure thing. I'm Rob Monroe, principal solution architect uh, for North America. Great. So a brief agenda as everyone's getting started, uh, logging in. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go over Appian RPA, just a brief overview of what Appian RPA is so we all understand what it is. Then we're going to see a demo of the product from Rob. Then we'll have the hands-on portion of the webinar, and we will wrap it up with a call to action and any questions and answers that are outstanding. Okay, so without further ado, let's get started. So what is Appian RPA? Well, Appian RPA is a feature of the platform. It comes with the Appian platform. We're not selling standalone RPA that you can buy with a credit card. You get it by licensing Appian. So far, this is only available via Appian Cloud. It will be available for all 20.1 sites, and anyone who wants to upgrade to 20.1 can purchase Appian RPA. The core values of the product and what sets it apart from the rest of the market is, one, the full stack automation capabilities, uh, high levels of security and governance, and again, if you have an Appian license, this will cost an additional 5,000 a month, and that is for unlimited robots. Unlimited bots, unlimited resources to execute those bots on. Uh, I don't know where else you can get that, but it's a pretty, uh, it's a pretty great uh, price for unlimited robots. So what did we acquire? Appian RPA, formerly Jadoka, it was an RPA software company that was located in Sevilla, Spain. The team is still there. They're just part of Appian RPA now. And seven years ago, they set out to make a cloud-native RPA product that developers would love to use. And by extension, the business ends up loving to use it too because it's so uh, secure and reliable to run these robotic processes in. But that's a side note. They designed everything in Java so that robots could run on any machine. So you're not limited to Windows anymore. You can run robots on, on Linux, and you can also develop bots on Macs. They picked up an impressive, an, an impressive customer set with great peer review ratings along the way. You can see here on the screen, this is Gartner's customer satisfaction peer review site. Uh, Jadoka has been updated to reflect Appian RPA now. And you can see we are already ahead of Pega OpenSpan, which is nice. Um, one of the quotes right there, the implementation was easy, flexible, and you can automate thousands of processes with it. So the product was great. The people were great, and everything was designed exactly how Appian would have designed an RPA system. It was a natural fit because Appian is a Java architecture. So now that Jadoka has evolved into Appian RPA, what does Appian bring to the table? Well, here are the three values or tenets of Appian RPA. Full stack automation, powerful governance, and secure cloud RPA. I'll talk to each of those. Appian full stack automation. Well, how do we define full stack automation? Full stack automation is a platform with fully unified workflow, case management, AI, and RPA that provides the right automation technology for the right use case. This enables full orchestration of the next generation of blended workforce, people, bots, and AI, all working together in frictionless workflows. And you're talking about uh, RPA, even in the absence of APIs. Powerful governance. This is what RWM, or Robotic Workforce Management Application, brings to the table, which all Appian RPA customers get for free. RWM allows you to centrally manage, monitor, and deploy robots across the organization to increase scale and performance. It provides all the key features needed to run an automation COE or center of excellence and helps align human and digital workers, things like process prioritization, ROI analysis, impact analysis, auditing, so one of the coolest features of, the auto, uh, of RWM is the Automation Planner. This easily manages the life cycle of RPA processes from the time a business user requests an automation to the time it is delivered in production. Some of the key capabilities include the identification of automation opportunities across the entire enterprise. Uh, you can connect RPA to greater and more complex business processes. So we're not only tracking RPA, but also BPM and AI, processes that include uh, AI. So everything can be tracked with the Automation Planner. Um, it helps establish a center of excellence with enterprise-wide grade governance and control, and uh, it expands the automation program and 
helps build a large backlog. Now the control center provides like data-driven insights about the digital workforce operation. What you can see here is we are vendor agnostic, so you can kind of start tracking all of your different RPA processes across any vendor. Uh, again, this comes free for Appian RPA, but UiPath, Ardob, and Blue Prism are RPA technologies that you can begin um, controlling and managing and orchestrating through the RWM application as well. So you can tie multiple vendors all together through the same control center. Um, the control center also provides a global case and exception management. So anytime any of your bots have an exception in production, a case is created, you can assign that to your Appian users as a task and um, the correct user can identify what went wrong in the system, update the robotic process straight from RWM and continue along, maybe log that and improve the process so your processes get better through the control center. The third tenant is the enterprise grade cloud. So all this is delivered through Appian's enterprise grade cloud. You can see the coverage in the map below and the certs like ISO and SOC uh, I believe FedRAMP is coming soon. And again, to, re to reiterate the pricing, Appian licenses plus 5K a month gets you Appian RPA with unlimited bots and RWM for governance. So existing customers pay 5,000 a month for RPA. New customers will buy the Appian licenses plus 5,000 a month for robots. Okay, so next I'd like to talk about the architecture of Appian RPA itself. This slide is an architectural diagram of the Appian RPA system. Uh, Appian RPA, of course, allows you to export robotic processes or bots on hardware identified as resources. So these are the resources right here. There is software running on each resource called an RPA agent. The coordination of the bots is performed by the, AP the RPA server, which is monitored through the RPA console. So let's further define these Appian RPA terms. The resource is any physical or virtualized hardware that is registered in the RPA console to run robotic processes. A, re a resource can be hosted on-prem or in the cloud, and it must have access to the systems that the bots interact with, either installed locally or, ex or accessed remotely using a remote desktop or Citrix session. The agent is the software that runs on the resource. It is responsible for the communication with the RPA server, which is again is hosted in the cloud, and it's responsible for managing the execution of the robotic process on the resource. The RPA agent is downloaded from the cloud console, so it's a very thin client, just you can download it right from the console. Uh, it's part of the cloud native capabilities. The RPA server, which is hosted in Appian Cloud, is like the central nervous system of Appian RPA. The server orchestrates and coordinates the queuing and execution of robotic processes on different resources. It aggregates user, usage data and metrics, and it contains the Nexus repository where all of the Java source code, the jars are stored and deployed to. And finally, the console, that's the web-based management interface of the RPA server. You can access it through the internet browser, uh, anyone, Chrome, Firefox. Uh, a user can access the console and deploy new robotic processes from it, manage, manage resources, and configure platform settings. So to break this down even further, everything on the top half is inside the Appian Cloud. That is the, the console, the orchestration server, and the Nexus repository that stores the jars. The bottom half, is uh, the client is responsible for that. So the client provides their own virtual machines, their own servers. The client is responsible for running the agent software that communicates with the server. And the client is also responsible for creating the robotic processes in the IDE of their choice. It's written in Java. They deploy that code to Nexus, uh, which is accessible through the console. And the resources ping the server uh, for execution requests. Once a robotic process has been queued up, a resource will that is available will offer to run it picks up the robotic process, it runs it on the client machine, and it pings back to the server any logging information available, and the results and output are also logged to the server. So again, these are the basics behind Appian's RPA architecture. Robotic processes are run on resources by the agent, which are monitored on the console and coordinated 
by the server. That's about as easy as the easiest way I can break it down for you, right? So you've heard a lot about this console, the web console. Um, this is the GUI around the server. There's a lot of features packed into the web console, the Appian RPA console. Um, we won't even be able to cover half of all the features. Some of the coolest features are down here at the recording and interaction section. Um, there's real-time screenshot capabilities for all robotic process executions. Also, there is video of each execution, uh, remote viewing of a resource. So you can basically have a live look into what is happening on a server. Uh, you can control the remote machine through the browser as well. So you have uh, remote control capabilities, which is something pretty unique. Um, the information section, obviously, this provides logging of executions, uh, great exception handling, and important KPI and metrics of your bot executions. And then one of the other cool features is the business tooling, things like alerts, actions, and events. Think uh, send IT an email each time my resource goes down. So alerts like that. We'll see more of the console later in the hands-on lab section. So robotic process development. It does take place in a Java IDE of your choice. You can choose IntelliJ, Eclipse, NetBeans, or whatever you develop Java code in. Uh, the requirements are Java 1.8, the J Maven for deployment, and that's the build tool, and the Nexus repository, which comes uh, in Appian Cloud. But you could use your own if you wanted. So as a developer, you get a ton of out-of-the-box modules to use when writing your robotic processes. Uh, there's a module for browser automation. So this is an around the system. library, which is super to automate the browser. Um, Selenium is a class automation tool. It's probably the most tool for quality assurance engineers. Um, it's one of the most reliable tools out there, and it makes it super simple to automate the browser. The Q module, um, this is for splitting up work items on different resources. So this is good for heavy loads of data. Multiple robots can work on the the same set of data, and the library that app, the app SDK or the model that we provide you makes it super simple to divvy up queues, assign work items to queues, and track work items in the queues. This plays into exception management as well, um, so it's a really good feature. The server module, this allows interaction with the server, so this is a module that you can get support files from the server, uh, log data or screenshots. You can request the input parameters from the server or any kind of secure credentials. This is one of the coolest features, the Falcon Engine. This is the computer vision, the pro proprietary computer vision module of the Appian RPA platform. Uh, robots using this module can extract text from the screen. It can, search from it can search for elements on screen whose position is unknown or take full or partial, partial screenshots. Uh, the keyboard and mouse module, so you can emulate the keyboard and mouse, and a whole bunch of others like Excel, Outlook, SAP, uh, Microsoft UI Automation. This provides programmatic access to most user interfaces on the Windows desktop. So I'll quickly mention the top-down design approach of Appy and RPA. So, at the, uh, so RPA, it shouldn't be designed at the tactical level or from the bottom up. Uh, as you know, like a quick win automation without taking into account how the automation fits into the larger business process. You can begin planning your automation with RWM Automation Planner. The COE and the people closest to the business will be able to fully map out and understand the process they are trying to automate. Much like the analyst view in Appian's process modeler, Appian RPA's workflow tool can help businesses, business users draw out the RPA processes like a flowchart and then assign each action to a developer to write the custom method in Java. Then, once the code is written, the analyst or designer can plug functions back into the corresponding workflow, and it promotes code reusability and planning. Lastly, we will touch on the resources. Remember, you can run on both Linux and Windows, and there is no cap to the amount of resources you create, unlimited. And Mac is also supported. It probably wouldn't be economical to run robotic processes on Macs in the Unix server, but uh, it can be used to develop bots on and test out robotic processes. It's good for devs and developers, and it's also unlimited. Okay, and so now I'll kick it over to Rob for uh, a full stack automation demo of the Appian RPA platform. 
Thank you, Sam. Share my screen here. Okay, great. Let me go ahead and hide this guy. Uh, so I'm going to show a full stack demonstration of Appian and an Appian RPA robot running in a very uh, common business use case that we would see. Uh, the use case that we decided to use for this business process is very manual, and uh, it, it it it's very typical. It, it it may be similar to one that your organization uh, has yourself, where uh, documents are coming into your organization. They might be coming in from email or scanned uh, from paper mail and placed into a Windows network share. Now. Uh, traditionally, Windows network shares behind firewalls have not been the great place to start uh, business processes from. Uh, so we're going to take we're going to take care of that with Appian RPA. Uh, the second part of this very manual business process is staff members having to look at these documents and categorize them maybe into folders, uh, which we would call this classification. And then the third being other staff members are going to view these. They're going to uh, open the document and they're going to manually enter them into a legacy, in this case, Windows.NET application. So very error prone, um, very time consuming, uh, just very manual work. So for this automation, what are, our, what are our goals? And these are really the goals around a lot of intelligent automation projects. Uh, first of all, we want to greatly eliminate the time spent and the human error in classifying and entering the data. So with uh, modern technologies, we should be able to hopefully get that down to as close to zero as possible with very little error. Uh, secondly, our application might be a commercial off the shelf application that we bought 10 years ago that we don't have the opportunity to modify in any way. Uh, so one of the goals of course is to not modify that application. Finally, uh, okay. we, wanna, we have our business and our enterprise concerns which are to increase the throughput and the scale as to allow, you know, accommodate growth for our business without having to staff up. And then of course, all of the enterprise concerns around security, auditability, governance, et cetera. So if you've been uh, a you know, customer of Appian for a while, or if you've, if you've been in the space, uh, you know, of course we have excelled at doing human centric BPM case management. That's been our bread and butter for a long time. Uh, and of course, that is represented here by the people swim lane. Over the past few years, we've added this other swim lane of using AI to augment these processes, help make quicker decisions, better decisions based on history, and of course, take advantage of uh, any off the shelf AI service that's out there. Now, with Happy and RPA, we had this third swim lane to be able to augment those processes and, and work even further with the ability for the robots to do rote task to take care of those and get away, get those away from our uh, human staff. So what are we going to do uh, with our, with our demonstration here? What, how does our automation flow look? Well, it starts with a robot. We're going to, we would have a robot scheduled. It was going to look in this uh, folder of, for documents. It's going to send them to Appian. Appian is then going to use the intelligent document processing application you may have seen yesterday. Uh, I've done zero modifications to it for this demo. I'm literally just having a robot send it to Appian and Appian start that process. That process is going to uh, attempt to categorize, uh, classify the document. If it uh, falls below a certain threshold, we will go to a uh, human in the loop uh, where we'll have a human classify the document. And of course, we will learn from that and improve the model over time. Uh, so it becomes more and more accurate as time goes on. Once that's complete, we'll send uh, that same document to, uh, in this case, it's going to be Google's Document AI uh, using Appian's new 20.1 features for document extraction. It's going to pull out key value pairs from the document. So this is different from OCR, where we're just pulling out any text. This uh, API in, in Intelligent Document Processing, you may have seen, actually pulls out form, uh, it, it, it detects form and table structure, pulls out the data and allows you, uh, it gives you access to that information. We take advantage of that to pull out in our case, what are going to be invoices and purchase orders. Again, if, if we fall below a certain threshold for the extraction, we'll have a human in a loop step. Once more feeding back into that model uh, where um, Appian learns your form mappings 
uh, over time and it gets better and better. Then finally, we wrap up the process by sending the data back to a robot, which is going to manually enter that data in the UI for this .NET application. Now, in an ideal world, you would have an API instead of a .NET front end. You would be able to write directly to the database and know that the data is perfect and clean. But in reality, we know that uh, uh, these older applications, they have business logic in the presentation layer. There's a lot of reasons you can't just go mucking about in the database. So we're going to automate the front end uh, to get that done. And of course, we're, we're, we're uh, launching this, managing all of this within Robotic Workforce Manager. So we're going to start the demo here. I'm in an Appian instance. I'm at the landing page for RWM. Uh, I, we will go through Automation Planner, uh, but that's already been done for this process. So I can launch the Control Center. And as, as we discussed, uh, ideally what we would do is we would have this robot running on a schedule, but that doesn't make for a good demo. Uh, that takes way too long. So. Um, uh, here we are. This is the this is the overall automation, and we talked about the automation being three major steps. We have an RPA robot for uploading documents. We have a BPM process, which is our IDP application, and then finally we have another robot to enter the data back into .NET. If I go into the ro uh, robotic process in RWM, uh, as mentioned, it would be run on a schedule, but we'll start it manually. I'll select my resource that I have uh, running. and I'll manually launch it. Now, this might be done by a business user who knows that there's a stack of files sitting there and they want work to get done quicker and they don't want to wait till the top of the hour for the robot to run so they can always come in here and start the process. Once I start this, I'm going to quickly switch over. This is a uh, Windows 10 instance running. This happens to be running in Windows Azure, uh, which is just to illustrate that these can run anywhere you like. Uh, and if you saw, there was files in this folder and they quickly disappeared. And so where did they go? Uh, what happened was the, the Appian RPA agent, which is running here in the tray, uh, ran the robot, found the files in this folder, and sent them off to Appian. So they are over here now in the intelligent document processing application, which we talked about yesterday. Um, I, I preloaded this with one, uh, just so we, we don't have to wait for these. But it takes a couple of minutes to go through uh, and classify these and then extract them. Well, classif classification worked really quickly. Uh, it was 100% confident. It's using a Google natural language auto ML model. Uh, this one has been trained very well. So it's very confident that these are purchase orders and invoices here. And then it sent it off to auto extracting. I now have tasks over here for uh, the one that I, that I preloaded. Again, you may have seen this yesterday. Uh, we won't spend too much, too much time in this demo on exactly what IDP is doing here, but this is uh, just a basic Appian application using the document extraction features of 20.1. It's pulling these values out. Uh, if I want to override one of them, I can come in here and manually do it. And then reconcile. And now the other three are done. This one here, I picked this on purpose because Google uh, wasn't sure about this here, this, this invoice 415 being the number. So you can manually type it in. Here's a purchase order. And uh, it's auto mapped the issue date, in this case, to del delivery date. Just for demonstration uh, sake, I'm going to click on order date here and set it to issue date. And let's just say I, I knew better and then overrided that. And then clicking reconcile. And then I'll finally do this last invoice. And I'll take the mappings as is and reconcile that. So uh, where, what have we done so far? We ran a robot. We found uh, some files that were uh, sitting in a Windows share. We sent those to Appian in the cloud uh, by way of a web API. Appian, uh, that web API launched the IDP process, which is out of the box in, in 20.1 with no modifications. Uh, we had humans, uh, well, we had AI classify them with 100% confidence, and then we had AI uh, help us auto extract, which we had some very good coverage. For example's sake, I changed some of the values. Now that uh, now that we've we've done that, this data now exists in a database. So uh, we can view that here by going into this, and and we can see that this the value sitting in in a, the local MySQL database in Appian uh, that's ready to go. Uh, I can even edit it here should I need to. Uh, but let's talk about a um, uh, another way to do this. 
So I've uh, put together a very quick site here, uh, really for just informational purposes for actually for those of us that run the demo. Uh, but I thought it would show it here at the time. So this is the Logomaya SQL database. These are the data, this is the values we just extracted from the documents. And while I can come back to RWM and I can launch the process, uh, like we talked about, like, like I showed previously, we can also launch them just in any Appian business process. Really, and that's what the, the, the true power here is with full stack automation. Your existing Appian applications might come to a step where you need a robot to take care of something. And that's just a node in a process model. So I've created a quick process model here uh, for manually launching that robot, uh, which I'll just go ahead and fire that off. Now that robot's running. Over here, we can see, we might move this out of the way. We can see the robot has launched this .NET application. It's pulled down the data that we just extracted, and it's now entering it into this legacy .NET application. This is happening in real time. Uh, with a nice, nice, very beautiful, old-looking Windows Forms.NET application. It's adding the three invoices, the one purchase order, and then it's done, and it closes, and now it's sitting there waiting for the next task. That was actually slowed down so that we can watch it. It can, it can do it much uh, even quicker than that. My database is now empty because I entered those things. Uh, this view of the database. This is looking at the SQL server that the .NET app actually looks at. And we can see here uh, the two value, the, excuse me, the three values here that we just extracted and the one over here. And there you go. We've done a full stack uh, Appian RPA full stack automation project where we have an, one robot that uploads documents. We have another process for extracting the data using AI and humans and then another robot to get it into the legacy .NET application. No modifications to the application, human errors reduced, and throughput is increased. And we've, meet, we've met all of our automation goals. Awesome. Thanks, Rob. Thank you. As you guys can see, it's a very powerful demo, full stack capabilities of Appian RPA, the Appian platform. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen again, and we will discuss the goals for today's lab. OK. so. This is the part where the hands-on lab portion of the webinar will be taking place. Again, if you did not see receive a site, just follow along and observe and request a trial site tomorrow. Um, so today for the lab, we're going to get oriented with the Appian RPA console. We're going to create our first robotic process, and we're going to successfully execute the robotic process from an Appian process model. <clears throat> What the, pro what the what robotic process we will be designing is uh, a process that enters structured data into Excel. Um, the data is structured through Appian's intelligent document processing application, and the robot is executed from an Appian process model by a call integration smart service. So it'll be very similar to what Rob just demoed. Uh, we're just replacing the legacy .NET application with Excel because we figured most users would have Excel. But the idea remains the same. OK, so I'm going to hop over to my Appian Cloud site now. Anyone that is participating in the lab, please go to your trial site now. I'll give everybody a minute to get over there. All right, so everyone, again, following along, just observe. And all the participators, you guys can work off of my screen that I'm sharing. You can download the PDF here, this link right here. Our, RPA activity workbook. Um, I know most of you are working from home now. You might not have a dual monitor set up, so I'll try to go at a steady pace. Um, feel free to just follow the screen share. Uh, I'll repeat certain things, and uh, we'll try to make sure that everybody's uh, on the same level. OK, so in your cloud site, what you want to do is at the top, upper top right, click the waffle icon or the menu icon, and select Appian RPA. So again, this is the Appian RPA console. It's available on all 20.1 cloud sites. Uh, it is single sign-on, so users are shared across the Appian platform and Appian RPA. So it will feel like a very unified, seamless experience working with the RPA console and the Appian platform. Um, again, the Appian RPA console is where you would manage and orchestrate all of your robotic processes and resources. Again, just to reiterate, the resources are machines that the robots will be, robotic processes will be running on. I know the lexicon um, 
is different across different vendors. UiPath might call the machines, where they have mach the idea of machines and robots as the resource. We call those resources. So um, we're, we are at the pre-lab configuration setup. I sent out an email for this, but we will quickly go over it here now. Um, in the left-hand sidebar, what you're going to want to do is click Settings to expand more options, then click Configure. So I'm over here in the left-hand side. I'll click on this caret. It'll point down. I'll have a list of links expanded. Just please click Configuration. So this is our configuration page. There's a whole bunch of settings we can configure here. Um, it kind of gives us uh, an idea of where this Cloud Console, the server that it's running on, um, folder that it's in. You have some customization properties here, like uh, header color, banners, et cetera. Uh, what we're going to want to do is, in the customization section, we're going to want to find the console URL text box. So that's this text box right here. If anyone sees this subdomain, U9Q8, in their console URL, please replace it with your trial site's subdomain. So I would just replace that subdomain with my trial site's subdomain. So overwrite it there. Once you have your trial site hooked up, hit Save Customization, and click OK on the modal that appears. So everyone's console URL in the console input box should be now pointed to their trial site subdomain. It should no longer have the U9Q8 subdomain. Now, this is something that would be automatically generated for each instance of cloud site spun up. But as we created this from an, a golden image, we are pointed to the site that, was, uh, that we spun it up from. So if everyone can scroll down and find the tools and configuration section. There is a, another text box called default repository URL. Again, if your subdomain looks like U9Q8, then please replace it with your Appian trial subdomain. So it should look like this. And we're just going to save that as well. And the default repository URL is just where uh, we are hosting Nexus on this server. Uh, you can see the default Nexus repository username and password is identified here. Uh, you can obviously change repository URLs to be defaulted to whatever you want. Maybe you have a dev instance or a staging instance that you need to um, point to for some period of time. That could all be done in this settings configuration tab. Great, so that's going to do it for the settings. Um, now we must find the uh, our users table. So. In the left-hand sidebar, please click Users. Everyone should see a table appear. Find your name, your email, and you should see a lock icon underneath the Actions column. Go ahead and click that lock icon. This is the Permissions configuration. Begin typing out Designer, and you should have an autocomplete come up. Just hit the Return key or the Enter key or click, and now you've you've assigned your user with designer permissions. So permi permissions in Appian and RPA are just string tags. They're much like AWS's IAM resource tags. They're flexible, and you can create any kind of permission scheme you want. Uh, permissions will obviously determine what users will be able to see and view and control in the Appian RPA console. So the permissions that you assign to the robotic process should also match the resource on, on which it is executed. If we don't assign the proper permissions, then the Appian RPA platform won't be able to, to find any appropriate resource to execute with, and the users won't be able to see them either. So we have to make sure that we've assigned the correct permission, and any resource or robotic process we create from now on will inherit this permission. All right, so that should do it. Again, if anyone did not see what I did, please just click the lock, lock icon and type in designer, hit enter, and you'll create a new permission set. All right, so we'll move on to step one now. This is the download Appian RP agent section. Note, if you do not have Java JDK 8 or the JRE 1.8 installed on your local machine, don't worry. Still follow along with the exercise. 
you can download that after and your robotic process will run just fine. So come over to the resources tab. You'll see a couple of resources already in the table. You can ignore those. Um, they're offline, but you can see they're Mac and a Windows resource. Let's ignore those. We're going to create a new resource. So at the top right corner, there's a plus icon. Click Add Resource. This is the Create Resource form. Appian RPA, you know, it lets you create an unlimited number of resources. The resources can run on either Windows, Linux, or Mac for development purposes. Um, please fill out the form. So what we're going to do is we're going to give our resource a name. I'm going to call it HOL Agent. You guys can do the same. I'm just going to denote that this one is a Mac because I'm going to run it. I'm going to create it for Macs first. So give your resource a name. And then for type, just choose RPA. But you can see RDA is an option as well. That's robotic desktop desktop automation. We will be uh, we won't be covering that today, but it's good to know that that is a capability. And for the operating system, depending on what operating system you're on, choose the correct one. So if you're on a Windows machine, choose Windows. If you're on a Mac, choose Mac. I'm going to create this as a Mac first. So form is set. I'm going to click Save. And as you can see, I've been redirected to a resource detail page. My resource record has been inserted into the SQL database, and I am ready to download the resource to my local machine. So to do that, you're going to want to find this download client icon up at the top right. What this will do, will it will download the agent executable to the browser. So I am on a Mac machine, so I will run through how to work get this working for Macs first. But you can see that run file has been downloaded. And I have to now go ahead and make this executable. So I'm going to open up my Finder on a Mac. And again, Windows users, you can hop to Section 8, Run Agent on Windows, and just perform these actions if you already, already have not um, followed them along for the Windows resource. But again, if you follow the pre-lab setup, you should already have this installed. So open up Finder and go to your desktop and create a new folder called Appian RPA. So Appian RPA is what I'll name it. I'll hit return. Everyone should have Appian RPA on their desktop if you're on a Mac. Now I'll just have a new Finder open. I'll go to Downloads. And I'm just going to drag the .run file to my Appian RPA folder. So everybody see that? I dragged what downloaded to the browser to the folder. And now it's in the Appian RPA folder. Next, we're going to open up the terminal application. So to do this, just hit the command space bar. It's a hotkey, command space, and you should get the spotlight search to come up. If you don't, if you're not able to do that, you can find the terminal application under applications, uh, utilities, here. But command space, terminal, begin spicing, uh, typing terminal, hit enter, and you should get a terminal screen um, appear on your desktop. It might look white. I have uh, black and green colors, but that's fine. Um, so this is the terminal. It'll open up in the home directory by default. Uh, this is your user directory where you can access your desktop. We have to change directories to the Appian RPA folder on the desktop. So type in the following command and press the return key. So I'm just going to type cd desktop forward slash Appian RPA. And at this point, I can just hit tab, and it'll autocomplete it for me. Uh, so your command should just look like that. Hit Enter. You're now in the desktop folder. We've changed directories successfully. Now we just have to make this file executable. So our .run file needs to be executable. How we do that is we just type in chmod, so chmod space plus x, and then appian rpa agent.run. You can autocomplete that. Hit enter, and look, our file is now executable. We can now run it. And to do that, just hit a period, forward slash, and then you can autocomplete Appian RPA agent.run. So to run it, period, forward slash, Appian RPA agent.run. I'm going to hit return. 
So we're about to stuff log to the terminal, and we have connected successfully to the server. You can see at the top right, tool panel at the top, this is our Appian RPA icon. Um, this signifies to us that the software is running, the agent is running, it is connected to our server, and we can now um, see what robots we have available to us. We can create a support image, so this would be used for the Falcon engine. So what it does is basically take a snapshot of your screen, and then you can snip around and save these to different robots in your environment, and then use those snippets later on for computer vision capabilities. So that's great. We have successfully connected our Mac. If I go back to the browser, you can see my agent, uh, my resource will come alive. There's a bunch of gauges that signifies how much reserved memory is left, the available disk space. You can see the, the dimensions of the desktop. Um, you can see where the agent is installed and running from and the operating system. You also get communication. So our first communication ever was from this IP. Don't steal that. And then we are also online. So cool, we have our first resource online. If I go back to the resources table, I'll now create one for Windows. So Windows users, you can follow along now. Um, I will just type in HLO agent Windows. Please name the resource HLO agent or anything you see fit to name it. Um, again, we're gonna select RPA as our type. And then the operating system will be Windows. So I'll save, and a new resource definition will be created in the database. See, I have an empty detail page. I will switch over to my virtual machine. I will refresh it here. And this, again, speaks to the, the portability of these resources and agents, right? I can just easily access the console through any browser. And if I'm on a server, a virtual machine that is being planned to run these robotic processes, all I have to do is access the console. I have to find my resource where I plan to use and then download the agent software to the desktop or to the server uh, and run it. So for Windows, you can see we've downloaded, it is a EXE extension. We'll go open up our folder, our file explorer, and then we will go to our hard drive and we will create a new folder called Appian RPA. Best practices here are to put the, uh, is to have the agent installed on the uh, C drive. Um, it'll work, you put it anywhere, but this is just best practice to create the folder here. So we've created our new folder. We will open up a new Explorer and go to the downloads. We will find our agent and drag over. And now Windows is a little easier than Mac because you can just run executables without providing permissions. So I can just double click the agent. You might get a modal that tells you that Windows protected your PC. If you see this link right here beneath the, the, sec the paragraph, just click it, more info, and then click the button, run anyway. So. You can see that my agent has been uh, is connected to the server successfully. You can right click it and click on something like Element Inspector. Uh, make sure you're connected to your trial site. If you aren't, um, that's fine too, but you should be connected to your trial site. Um, you can exit out of this. This is a cool thing too, because it can give you like positions of your mouse and you can use this as a little helper tool for creating your robotic processes. Another thing is the RDA element is seen here. Um, if we had robotic processes in our console at this point, we could refresh this list and then you would be able to run them directly on the desktop uh, manually. So that's kind of like the personal bot assistant RDA uh, feature, but we aren't discussing RDA today. Now, if you see, I can refresh again and my Windows machine will come alive. Um, current folder, reserve memory, cool things like that. Now, if I go back to my local Mac and uh, refresh, you'll see that I'm online now with both resources. And I can actually 
take a live look at what's going on in my VM through this remote control button. You guys don't have to follow along and do this, but this is just for demonstration purposes. If I click this uh, eye icon, I can now see what is going on in that VM that I just installed that resource on. And if I click this control, I can actually control the desktop from the browser. So it's a pretty neat feature. Um, maybe not to be used in the wild too much. Uh, there is a hide or protect desktop feature, so people can't just live look in to other people's resources. Um, and if your server's headless, then there's no looking anyway. So just something to note. Cool. So we've got our resources. Um, we're going to continue on to the next step is create robotic process. So to create a robotic process, you're going to find and click robotic processes in the left-hand sidebar. On the robotic processes page, you want to find the create robot icon on the top right side. It is the first icon, the little black robot, and a plus sign. So here, you can see it. If I just click that, a modal window should pop up. This is the robot creation form. We have to set a couple of inputs. So first, name your robot Excel data entry. So I'll just type that out, Excel data entry. You don't have to name it that, but it's good to name it that. Um, now we'll see this technology dropdown. We have Java, which is what we're going to select. But you also have the ability to create robotic processes with auto hotkey and auto it. These are just macro technologies that I am not too familiar with but it might appeal to someone. And for template, just click the template dropdown. And one of the best features about this whole Java development thing is you're not on your own. We're not just going to say, hey, get to it. Here's a blank Java project. Now build us a bot. We're going to pretty much bootstrap you for all of your bot development. So you can kind of choose to get acquainted with uh, robotic process development and Appian RPA some of these different types of robotic processes. Like if I selected the browser template, it would help me automate the browser, Excel, et cetera, et cetera. Falcon, that's like a tutorial for using computer vision with Appian RPA. Uh, but for today, and it's like Java with bumper lanes, right? So it creates the whole project for you. It connects you, it creates the POM file for you. You have a, a complete connection to the Nexus repository. So you don't have to configure anything yourself. The, the templating feature does that all for us. So if I scroll down and select hands-on lab, this is the template that we will be working off of today. So everyone, please make sure you select hands-on lab. And then finally, you can leave these last three fields alone. This is just Nexus repository information, like our group ID, the version. You can have different versions of your bot and the, rep the repository which where this uh, jar, this package jar will be added to the source code. So again, you can see you could you could pretty much send this jar anywhere uh, if you've um, added it as a a, um, a repo URL in the past. But please make sure you choose your trial site. All right, so we're going to hit OK. So this spinner is appearing up at the top left. That's because this is not only creating the record in SQL, but again, also packaging the source code for you and creating a Java project for you. So you can see that most of you should have a zip downloaded to your browser. That is the actual Java project. We're not going to open that today, but after the lab, maybe you want to set up your developer environment. Feel free to open that up and try out as many templates as you want. Um, we might open it later, but we're not going to be working with it on the lab. So I'll hit OK. And now we are redirected to the robotic process configuration page. This is that record in SQL. And just like that, we have created our first robotic process. And I'll just speak to this uh, configuration page. You know, you have some general information, of course, like the name. Um, one, of the, one cool thing is this priority dropdown. Appian RPA um, has a built-in queuing system. So any uh, robotic process executions that are sent to the server for execution get lined up in a queue. So maybe a particular resource has a, a, a long line of robotic processes waiting to execute on it. If I select my robotic process as the highest priority, then my, my process jumps the line to the front and executes ahead of all the other 
processes in that queue. And that is a built-in feature. All queue man management is handled for you. You don't have to code anything. That is all taken care of behind the scenes through the, the architecture and the design of the system. But you don't have to select HIAS because we're only running one robot today on one resource, so it's going to be fine. Um, default color, that's stuff like if you're going to schedule this robotic process, this is how it will show up in the calendar. You can give it an icon, description, um, what the expected input and output would be, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but what we're interested in right now for step three is the workflow designer. So if we scroll down to the workflow section, the workflow is a drag and drop interface where we can design the robotic process at a high level. Think of it as BPM light with start and end nodes, action nodes, conditional gateways, connectors. It's also kind of what I mentioned in that slide with top-down design. Maybe I'm not an actual Java developer, but I want to diagram out the robotic process to assign to a Java developer. I can do my own, uh, I can create my own workflow, maybe put in notes about, hey, this is where we want to invoke SAP, right? Things like that. And then you would assign the workflow to a developer. They understand the overall picture of what you're trying to automate, and then they can go ahead and build out the custom functions. But today, we actually are going to build a full robot with the workflow. So the second step of the design work robotic process workflow would be to remove the arrow between the start and end nodes. So if I click on this arrow that's connecting these two nodes, you should see two circles pop up on it. You can just hit the press the delete button on your keyboard, and that will remove the arrow. I'll make sure everyone saw that. Like man Z, I'm just removing this arrow between the start and end nodes. Now I'm going to drag this end node. So I have enough space for three different actions. So you can kind of get used to the drag and drop interface now, kind of line them up correctly, the start and end nodes, make some space because we are going to add three action nodes in between these start and end nodes. So one thing you can do is we can double click on the text of the nodes to change the description. So for example, we can double click the text in it and change it to start. So if I double click into that node and just type out start, if I hit the return or enter key, this will line break. But if I just click out, it'll take the update. So we have our start and our end node. Now we're going to add the action nodes into the workflow. So click the blue square icon in the upper left toolbar. You can find that here. It's called Add Generic Action. We will be adding three actions to this workflow, so click the icon three times. One, two, three. So you should see them stacked up. Now we're just going to drag these in between the start and end nodes. So divvy them up as you shall do. You can get crazy with it by maybe putting one up, one down. But I suggest just a straight line. Now that we've linked the, so now we have to link the nodes together, and we can do this with connector arrows, which represent, which help represent these actions as a sequential chain of events. So, fall, so the, the workflow will follow the arrows. So if you click on the start node, you should see four circles at the top, right, bottom, and left points of the node. So I will click on start. My node is activated. I see those circles. Uh, click the circle to the right and drag it to the next action node. So I'm going to drag it and connect it. You should see two circles to signify that it's connected. So we're going to repeat this process So for each action node now. So click on the gray square action node, first gray square action node. You should see those same circles. Drag and drop. Second, click, grab the circle, drag and drop and then drag it all the way to the end. So just for anyone who didn't see, manzine, undo, and drag, drag, and drag. And if you get little squigglies, you can reorder it and get everything straightened out.
Cool. So if you guys remember what we talked about, what our process was, we were going to be taking structured data that is stored in Appian, um, that's waiting for downstream processing, and we're going to be sending that structured data to this robotic process that we're creating right now to enter both invoice and purchase order data into Excel. So let's name these actions accordingly. The first one, we're going to uh, call it Open Excel. This is where we will actually be opening the Excel file. Um, this is all done programmatically, so you won't see Excel uh, open up on the server like you saw the .NET application in Rob's demo. It, it happens behind the scene. It's a, it's a the module is built around Apache uh, API and um, POI library for Excel. So it all happens programmatically. Um, so we're going to open Excel first. Next, we will enter the invoice data into the Excel sheet. So we'll call this action enter invoices. Cool. And finally, enter POs for entering the purchase order data into the Excel sheet. Great. So we've designed our first robotic workflow. We can scroll down to the bottom and click the Save button. So this isn't entirely necessary, but it's good to save work just in case, God forbid. So after you've saved and the page is refreshed, you can scroll back down to the workflow section. And now we are going to assign our custom Java functions that are in that HOL template um, to our actions. So. To get you guys familiar with this, if I click on that start node again, there's an icon up at the top right. It looks like a checklist. If I click that, I can see that this start method has already been assigned the start method, um, custom method. So you can see this is a Maven front end plugin that allows us to view what's in Nexus on the client. So the jar in Nexus is the main class of it, where all the public methods are for this robotic process are viewable on the front end in the browser. And you can't edit it in the browser. You can do Groovy custom scripting, but that's not for this lab. Um, but you can view what is been assigned. And you can see that back to that slide about the developer SDK, we have a server module. This is getting our input parameters from the robotic process configuration and assigning it to an invoice array. And then we were just kind of telling the server how many invoices and purchase orders we plan to process in that particular execution. So if I hit OK, that is kind of an overview of how to assign custom functions to actions. Now we're going to plug in the three empty actions. So everyone click open Excel and find the checklist. You can see there's nothing been assigned to this one. That's because we just created it. Um, find the open Excel method under the custom methods drop down here. Don't click this button because this adds it as a multiple action, which is a cool feature. You can um, aggregate different actions together, um, almost creating your own little sub processes or subroutines within actions but we won't do that today. Just if you did hit this button, just you can delete it up at multiple action. Um, so click open Excel and we can read what this Java is. So again, we're using that server module provided by the Appian RPA SDK to tell the server that we are now initializing the Excel file, uh, uh, the Excel module with the file. Um, it's getting the file from the server. Um, it's constructing the Excel module instance and initializing that class with the Excel file. So anything um, we do with this Excel module and from here on out will be directly um, actionable on the file from the server itself. So we will click OK. And cool, look at that. Our action has lit up blue, dark blue. And it's signifying us that this action now has a custom function 
assigned to it. You can go ahead and fill out the rest of your actions with the appropriate methods. So enter invoice, just find the camel case to enter invoice method. You can see that we're checking if the file is open um, and if the workbook sheet is on the invoice sheet. If not, we'll log to the server that we could not find the Excel file um, as an error. And then we're looping over the invoices and we are just setting the current item to that particular invoice. And we are creating the rows to be inserted into the Excel sheet with the help of the Excel module. Finally, you can see that the row is created for each one, invoice number, invoice date, due date, all being entered into our Excel file. And the last little section here, we're just telling the server that, hey, this current invoice, uh, we, we process it successfully on the, on the, on the, the resource. So it's, letting, it's continue, continuously updating the server that we process this item OK. And this results. We're, we're adding it to the results, which will be viewable at the end of the robotic process execution. So I'm going to hit OK. We now have Enter Invoice and Enter POs. Finally, we'll do, choose the Enter PO method. And this is largely the same as the invoices, Enter Invoice method. Um, one thing to note here is we're using the Excel module to switch the sheet to the purchase order sheet. And if we don't find that, again, we error out. OK. We have successfully configured our workflow. The final workflow should look like this. Start, open Excel, enter invoices, enter purchase orders, and end. That end node, all it does is it, after all the loops have been completed, it just sets the result to the server telling us, hey, we processed all of these invoices and purchase orders successfully. Here's the output. Now, the last thing we have to do for a robotic process configuration is, well, how, how is this process getting the invoice and purchase order data? Well, that is done with instructions. Instructions, just think of them as input parameters for a robotic process. Um, we have to add two of them. There are going to be two string input instructions, one for invoice JSON data and another for pur purchase order JSON data. So click, so find the add instruction button. Instructions are just two sections down from workflow. <clears throat> so find that button, give everybody a little chance to find it. And then click the little carrot, downward facing carrot, and you'll get a little modal with um, the options for instruction creation. So I can create a string instruction. It's for string inputs. Password, these are masking uh, string for to make sure your passwords are hidden on server logs. Boolean, you can pass in true or false. Uh, combo, these are just default values, so you can kind of create a dropdown or um, constants. It's good for constants. And then file, you can obviously pass in files to the robotic process as well. So click that twice. Click string twice. Make sure you click string. So make sure each you, you, you should have two instruction forms here. They should both say string. And if you verify that, name the first one invoices, all lowercase, and the second one purchase orders or POS, just POS. So you can find that the names of those in the uh, PDF if you just want to copy and paste. But it needs to be exact. So I'll leave the screen on here for a second just to make sure everybody has invoices and purchase orders, all lowercase, two instructions, string inputs, good to go. Now, with instructions, you can also provide default values, um, and then you can make them required too. So the robotic process won't execute if the specific instruction isn't sent to it. It's a cool feature. So finally, if we scroll down to the bottom, we can save one more time. We're sure we want to save, so click that OK on that modal. And that will do it for the robotic process configuration. We're going to return to the tab where our cloud site is. And we are going to set up the Appian RPA integration from the Appian platform side. So if everybody is back on 
the hands on uh, the hands on lab welcome screen. Again, find that waffle icon or the menu icon up the top and click Appian Designer. Should now be in the designer. Um, what we're going to want to do is click the data entry robot application. So find that it should be the second application. And once we are inside that application, for anyone who didn't see that, just data entry robot. <clears throat> once we're inside this application, we can filter integrations because that's what we want to update. So come to the left-hand side, you see the object types, find integration and click that checkbox. We filtered out our different executions. What we want to edit is the DER execute robot integration. So please find that and click it. Cool. So again, going back to how we wanted to bring this to market, we unified the experience between the Appian platform and the Appian RPA console. And part of that unification, we saw a single sign-on, um, saw, saw what we did with cloud. Uh, part of that unification was the low code or no code even connectors to the console. So what you're seeing here is the execute robotic process, no code integration, um, which relies upon the Appian RPA connected system. If we go into that Appian RPA connected system, we can see that it is reliant on a service account, API key. Um, one quick aside is that service account users will be executing the robotic process on our behalf. So not only are users created as, or, you know, Appian users are created in the Appian RPA user table, but also service account users. So if I quickly come back over to users, I can show you that we have this Appian RPA service account. You can see it also has designer permissions. So it will be able to execute any robotic process that we created as a designer because those tags will match up. So that should give you guys ideas of what you can do with permission tags, how this will all work in your own systems. But enough with that. We can test connection and see that we are successfully hooked up to our RPA console. And again, we are on the execute robotic process operation. You can see there's a dropdown. There's you can execute from the Appian side, and then you can also retrieve execution results from the Appian side. We're going to stick with execute robotic process for this operation. And now if you click the dropdown, you should see the robotic process we just configured in the RPA console. So if I select the robotic process, watch this waterfall effect. You have three different options now. Uh, well, you have three different form inputs now. You have the resource, the description, and the robotic process instructions. Now, starting with the bottom up, if we didn't provide robotic process instructions, you wouldn't see this grid. But again, this is a no-code connector, so we wanted to bubble up any process instructions that may be on a configuration with all the, the correct types. So if we had a file as an input, you would see the Appian document picker. This is text, so you can see that type listed in the middle. And the names came over correctly, invoices and POS. We just set that up in our robotic process configuration page. Second, the description. Not even sure if description is required, but this can just tell you, um, this can be dynamic as well. And you can um, log out on the console side um, when this specific execution was run, um, different namings behind that. It's all up to you. And then finally, the resource dropdown. You can see you guys should only have, for the folks that are following along and participating, you will only have, uh, you'll probably have three resources. I have four because I set one up on Mac and Windows, but you can see your, the Mac agent and Windows agent are both offline. Those are the two we started with. Um, so don't select those, but just as a note, those are created with designer permissions as well. So anything created, any resource created as a designer will show up in this dropdown because we have access to see those resources to read and execute on. Um, so I'll select HOL agent Mac online. You guys should just select HOL agent 
online. And then we'll give it a description, executing from Appian process. Model. Type in whatever you want there. And then finally, for the robotic process instructions, find the invoices row and hover over the value column or the value cell and uh, click edit as expression. This little button will pop up on hover. We will just be adding a rule input for invoices and purchase orders. And you can see I've already created the rule inputs for you. So click the edit as expression button and just type out RI bang invoices. This is our invoice JSON taken again from SQL on the Appian side. And then hover over the POS value cell and click edit as expression. Same thing, RI bang POS. Cool. So hit OK. And everything set up correctly. It should look like this. Now I know it's tempting to hit test request right now, but don't. Just save changes up at the top right. And you should see changes are saved. And this, the, the save button should be grayed out. So if anybody's form doesn't look like this, I'll give you guys a quick second to catch up. I think we can move on and execute it. So if you're still on the integration window, you can find the, the waffle icon again, find the sites at the bottom, and choose legacy app data. So this will look familiar. This is kind of what Rob had demoed earlier. This is kind of a dumbed down version just for this lab. Uh, it's a simpler version. This is our structured data that has been processed through the, the IDP, the Intelligent Document Processing App. So you guys might even have more invoices or purchase orders than I do. If you took that lab yesterday, that's fine. But from here, obviously, we want to send this structured data as JSON to our robot. I don't know. Maybe we can see the process model before we do it. But this is the process that is backing that button. And we're fetching the structured data, courtesy IDP on Appian SQL. Here is our smart service integration here. It's passing that as rule inputs to the execute robot. We are pulling. It's an asynchronous get for the result. So we're pulling, waiting, waiting. And if it failed, we'll end out. And if it was successful, we will mark the purchase orders and invoices completed. Now, this is a very simple example. Obviously, there is much more exception handling and uh, data validation in any production app, but this gets the job done for today. So I'll head back over to our legacy app, and I will click Send to Robot. Now, everyone can jump over to their console, and if they click Dashboard, you can see the execution is in flight. So click on that link and view the execution log. This is all real time. Uh, my Mac is asking Nexus for all of the libraries that are, it's dependent on, dependent upon to run this specific process. You can see it got the support file. There was three invoices, two purchase orders. It set the number of items. It looped through the invoices first, entered it into Excel, went to the purchase order sheet, looped over the purchase orders, entered those into Excel. It ended, it sent the results to the server, and it outputted a result file, and it gave me each item's details below. So if I click on the XLSX file, I can open that, and there you have it. Three invoices, two purchase orders, all on your desktop, run locally through Appian's process model. It's a full stack automation demo again, swapping out the data entry app for Excel. So for all of my Windows users, I can simply go back over. I will reset the demo data. So anybody has access to that button, you can obviously just reset it to try again. And if I go back over and choose Windows, I can save that. And then I'll run it from here. This should refresh automatically. I'm using the refresh variables from 19.4, I think. There you go. Another cool Appian feature that I suggest everyone look at. And I'll send this to Windows. And obviously, we don't get the cool thing with Excel popping up. We don't get that effect. But if I go over to my dashboard, 
Um, you can see it's now executing on the Windows agent. It's the my Windows VM is requesting all of the dependencies. It's processing the support file. It's gotten the three invoices, three purchase orders, or the two purchase orders looped over successfully, and we have a new output of Excel. Cool. And obviously, this file is, you know, you can get this anywhere. So one neat feature of Appian RPA is I can actually replay that execution straight from the console. So this is great for developers debugging. It'll replay the same exact execution with the same resource and instructions provided to it. So if I click re-execute, this will start up execution number three. And this time, it's running on the same machine, but it didn't have to grab all those dependencies because we stored those locally on our virtual machine or desktop. So if I go over to my VM, I can see this is my Appian RPA folder that I set up earlier. You can see now that I have a Jadoka cache. These are those 40 files that I requested from Nexus. Makes it run faster the second time, and there forth. Um, and then this Jadoka workspace, which is basically just a virtual, represent um, a virtual representation of the file system on the server. So this is my Excel data entry robotic process. And you can see my support file has been added here. Now, obviously, I could have created a, an Excel file from scratch through Java, but we did add those as a support files. And that's something you guys were kind of blind to this particular lab. But I can show you where that was. And you guys can go see it now. If you go up to support files from robotic processes, the Excel file that it's grabbing is from here. Now, slight difference. This is the global support file. So any robotic process with the designer permission will look in this part of the file system for support files for that robotic process. Now you can also add support files to the robotic process configuration detail page. So I can add support files here as, here as well. So it'll check both places, the global, the permissions are correct, and the actual robotic process configuration support files entry. So that's kind of a cool feature as well. Um, I'll stop now uh, for any kind of questions. I do, I think that does it for the lab. Again, if you didn't have Excel, you can click that link in the PDF and just drop your Excel file in there, view it. And there is a um, inclusion step, which talks about how to get up and running with uh, browser automations. Uh, I suggest maybe you guys take a look at that next on your own. I can quickly show you that, but maybe we should pause now and um, take some questions, or I'll finish with uh, the call to action. And if we have more time, we can talk about the browser automation as well. So let me just present this. So what's next? You guys have seen, um, you guys got an overview of Appian RPA. You kind of now understand the architecture behind it, who it's uh, tailored for, who it's geared for, um, some use cases. Uh, you saw a full stack automation demo from Rob, and then you completed the hands-on exercise. Uh, I would suggest for anyone who didn't have a trial site today um, to request an Appian trial site, Appian RPA is now included in the 20.1 trial. And then there's training resources for customers. Um, one is more geared toward developers. It's Appy and RPA, Learn to Develop Bots. And the introduction to Appy and RPA, both developers and business users can get more acquainted with the, uh, the system. And also, um, please visit the RPA forum on community. It's pretty lively right now. Uh, I don't, this thing's only been out for a week. So go there with any questions you may have, anything that wasn't answered today. Uh, feel free to that link. Or just go to community and filter by app and RPA. So we bring that down here. So yeah, check out community, get your questions answered, and that'll about do it. Um, yeah. So I mean that that completes the lab. Um, I don't know if anybody wants to see browser automation done, or you can do that on your own. But 
I am finished. Thank you all for joining. Uh, I hope you guys have a great rest of the day. If anybody wants to stay on, I can quickly demonstrate the uh, a robotic process for browser automation. OK, so anybody who's still on, um, there's the conclusion step in the hands-on lab. It talks about how to run browser automations in Appian RPA. I'll just head back over to the console. I will go over to robotic resources, and I will click create robotic process. I'll call this browser bot. And then I will select this robot browser ar archetype. Uh, there's one for Linux and one for Windows. I'll click the one for Windows. And this is just going to set me up. I'm going to get my job. My Java project is going to be downloaded right to my browser. I'll wait for that. The record is created in SQL. Now I can actually open this project in IntelliJ. I'll show you guys what that actually looks like for anybody who's curious. So we have our POM file pointed to our Nexus repository. And we have our main Java class here. You see it implements iRobot. That is something that every uh, app in RPA uh, robotic process needs to implement. And any public method defined underneath in, inside this class will now be viewable on the Appian RPA, in, inside the Appian RPA robotic process configuration workflow. So head back over to my workflow, I can see that templates even create workflows for me. So that's really cool. Um, users and developers can create their own templates. You can also extend um, libraries through modules. So you can create um, libraries, of course, here and use your own. SDKs, or you can build your own SDKs. Um, I'm sure, much like uh, App, Inc., um, App Market um, connected system plugins, we'll have like a vibrant bot market sooner than later, where people can upload their own snippets, their own libraries, et cetera, et cetera. That the Appian RPA developer SDK supports all of that. So you can see my Java function is here for open browser. If I just went ahead and changed uh, let's say one of these um, server logs to HOL today. And I click Save. You can see I can come over to Maven Project. This is recognized as a Maven project. You can see my Maven settings are hooked up to this bot that is here. Anyone unfamiliar with Maven, this is just telling it to build and push to this repository. And I have a lifecycle method that allows me to deploy. So if I deploy this code, this will push up to the Nexus repository. It will build my jar, and the new jar will be updated in Nexus. And now if I refresh here, I can see that HOL today has been updated. Right. So that's how easy it is to push back and forth code to the server. Um, there's also remote debugging capabilities, so I could easily just connect to my local or uh, a different VM where the bot is running. It's port 1300, and to do that, I would have to create this. I'm going to call this robot. Bye. Okay. And then all we have to do is generate a config file. This is also pretty handy. We'll enable debug, we'll generate the config file. So that's generated. We'll head over to terminal and we'll just we we'll have to restart once we generate a config file. So I'll rerun this. And now I should be able to connect to my local host. Um, so I'm connected, right? So now I can actually breakpoint. So if I execute this from the console, make sure I choose Mac. I will actually hit that breakpoint in the IDE. So all of this, all the dependencies, of course, have to be downloaded to my local. 
and you can see my breakpoint has been hit. I can step through it just like that, <clears throat> um, see what's going on with it. Now, what this is going to do, well, let's stop that. Actually, go run Chrome, but you can see it's not best practice to remote debug locally. You'd want the best development setup you could possibly hope for is a place to uh, a local machine to develop the robotic process and a VM, an EC2 instance. It can be even like a um, trial, uh, like a free tier instance to run the robotic processes on. Because if you're connected um, remotely to the VM, you won't interrupt windows that are um, coming on screen and things like that it's a lot harder to navigate that on your local. So best practices for remote debugging to have a virtual machine that you can connect to and the developer stays on the local and they run robotic processes in the VM and remote debug like that so that there's no interruption of the actual um, focusing of Windows on the, on the machine. So you can see that, that just hit a, uh, a dead URL. That's because the template is still pointed to Jadoka.io, um, which no longer, I don't know if it exists anymore, but we can <clears throat> update that. So without even touching the Java code. So you can see it's hard coded right here, blog.jadoka.io. Let's switch that over to appian.com. So I mentioned some low code methods earlier. Those are available. About 30% of the Appian RPA SDK has been written as low code um, mod module methods. So if I come over here, you can see I have Appian services. This allows me to start a process from, um, uh, from Appian RPA workflow. So I can select like upload document or something for intelligent document processing. I can choose my workflow variables, cool things like that. But since we're doing browser automation at the moment, let's navigate to a different URL. So I will just type in appian.com into the URL input, and I'll hit OK. I'll navigate, and then I will hook up my connectors. I will save this. And then I will go ahead and execute it again. And this time, it'll hit appian.com without having to touch Java. So that's really cool. It was a split second. Um, I guess I could also play it and capture screenshots. So there's different settings. If you're executing it manually, you can pick multiple executions to launch. You can do step-by-step -step execution. Um, so if I click those, I actually have to step through the workflow myself. So you can see it's paused on the start action. If I just say forward, it'll now attempt to open up that browser. And it's all being controlled through Selenium, which is a support file that my machine has for Chrome. It's going to play forward and navigate to Appian. And then if I play again, I'll end out. And if I check my execution log, there was screen capture at each stage of that. So really cool features. You can download these right to your browser. This ties back into center of excellence, um, exception handling, full governance, all those capabilities that we took, talked about earlier. Um, finally, I'm sure you guys want to see how we run this on IE. So if I go over to this configure here, go back into my robotic process configuration, um, I'll add an instruction, and I'll call it, and I'll use the combo instruction. And I will just name this browser. And then I will provide a, an array of constants for each of my browsers. So I have Internet Explorer, Firefox, Chrome. I can remove this support file because it's taking from the global. And I will hit save. And if nobody understood that jargon, global support files. These are all of my web driver executables for Selenium. So 
If I go back over to BrowserBot, <clears throat> manually play this again, I now have a dropdown for my combo. And if I select Internet Explorer, and I should make sure that I run this on my Windows machine because Mac will catch it, and it's smart enough to tell you exactly the right error. Hey, like you can't run Internet Explorer, i.e. web driver on a Mac. We'll actually show you that in the logs. Uh, if I play it and head back over to my workspace, you can see the support file come in and IE kick into gear. Now it's going to download all those dependencies. It's opening the browser. I on the right VM. So it's using default module Internet Explorer options. There's IE and there's Appian.com. Cool. And so from there, that is an initial way to start begin your scripting, your browser automation scripting journey with Appian RPA. You have that all with a predefined template here. Downloads right to the browser. You can open that up in your favorite um, Java IDE. You have all of your public methods here. You can check out Appian RPA documentation to see how Selenium works within RPA. And we even got to see some low code modules being performed. So like, we got to see the navigate. We switch that over to Appian.com. You can also see uh, there's there server modules that you can send screenshots straight away. Again, the module thing, about 30% of the Appian SDK is covered here. I wouldn't recommend any production bot using this. But again, to tie it back one more time to the center of excellence and top-down design, um, business users can come into the workflow editor and use this low-code tooling to help define what they want. They can even mess around with these modules, these low-code modules, and give an idea of the automation they want to form, um, save that as a workflow to the RWN application, and better understand the processes they're trying to automate. So you'll see more of this low-code capabilities to come. Um, it's, we're still pretty new with this product, but you know, if you, you've been around Appian for a while, if you've been a customer for a while, you know that sale was once just an expression language, and now we have the interface designer. So expect big things. Um, it's a great product. I personally love it. I'm familiar with all the vendors. And the fact that I can code in an IDE now, as opposed to a studio, I don't, I don't ever really want to look at a studio again. Um, it's just freeing. And um, it makes for much more reliable, resilient bot development. It goes in line perfect with uh, enterprise-grade scalable robotic processes that have full acceptance handling and uh, governance all through it. And hey, at the end of the day, you're trusting Java developers as opposed to RPA developers to writing your critical RPA processes, right? There's much more Java developers out there than seasoned RPA developers. And I would say the entry level for Java development in this platform is you know, strong entry level to mid. You, you're not just like, this isn't just like crazy. You have to be coded for coding for 20 years. I would say, um, you know, a strong entry level person can begin designing these scripts straight away. So that about does it for me. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the time. Um, I'm going to wrap up Rob, if there's any parting wisdom you want to give to anybody. I think wisdom is a wisdom would be a strong <laughs> word to use. Uh, <laughs> I would say uh, get on community, uh, chat about this. Let us know what your use cases are. Let us know what you're automating. Uh, we'd really, really love the feedback. Um, you can email me directly, M-U-N-R-O-E at appian.com, and I'd love to hear um, what, what you guys are up to and if you have any questions or comments. All right, guys. Have a great rest of the day, and stay safe out there. Bye.